Hey, Scott from What You Seek, and today we are going to look at the Pioneer Mark I from Hanhart. Now, Hanhart is a German company, but they were actually founded in Switzerland way back in 1882. For a really good uh, article about Hanhart and actually a factory tour, check out uh, Flieger Friday from August 2017, where Banu Chopra, Mike Stufler, who is a Watch You Seek moderator, and Mario visited the Hanhart factory and also uh, some really good history of the company in that article. So this watch here is the Pioneer Mark I, and this watch is basically a replica of a Hanhart model called the Caliber 40 that was launched in 1938. Now this is a chronograph, so you can see you have the 30 minute register here at three, but there is only one pusher, there is no reset pusher. So the way this works is you can see the chronograph right now is running. When I hit this, this will stop the chronograph. And I push it again, and it resets. I push it again, and it will start. So interesting design, uh, the single pusher. Uh, something different, uh, unique, definitely I think uh, adds a, a neat touch to somebody's pilot watch collection. So once again, so I push it to stop and then reset. Pretty cool. So the diameter of this watch is 40 millimeters. It is 15 millimeters tall. So it is a fairly tall watch. We have a lug to lug length here of 49 millimeters. It is a strap width of 20 millimeters. The material of this watch is a stainless steel. It is brushed. For the most part, most of the case is brushed. You have, you can see the graining going this way, circular, you know, if you will, ar around the watch. And on the side here, it's running lengthwise. We do have some polished edges on the, the side here of the, the back. We do have a fluted bi-directional bezel. So the, the fluted bezel is a kind of a trademark of Hanhart. It has this red, orange, and origin marker here, so you can clearly see where you're setting that to. I will say the, the friction setting is nice. It's fairly easy to turn, but once you get it into position, it's not going to move around on you. Easy to turn. Nice feel on that, that fluted bezel. The lugs here, I do like the design of the lugs. The way that they kind of come out the radius here. So you can see we've got this radius of the, the watch and then it just kind of leads into this area here. I find that very pleasing. It's a nice design and when you look at the sides, the lugs just kind of appear out of the side of this this very straight sided case here. Nice lugs. I like the length of the lugs. I have a pilot's watch from a different manufacturer and the lugs are fairly short. And when I want to, or wanted to, cause I kind of can't put a, a heavier, you know, vintage looking strap, the strap actually rubs on the back not the case with this Pioneer Mark I. There's plenty of room between a strap, and this is a fairly hefty, thick strap, and the way the, the lugs stick out on the case here. The water resistance on this case is 100 meters, so no worries with uh, water with uh, this watch at all. The case back construction, it is a solid case back that is a screw down design. You can see we've got the Hanhart logo there, made in Germany, some, some more text around there. Nice, simple case back. The crown, if you probably haven't noticed by now, it is an oversized crown. Very easy to grab a hold of, to wind, to set the time. On the back of the watch, there is this little cutout that kind of angles in it's a little scoop so it's easy for me to get my nail behind the the crown here pull out it is not a screw down crown so i can easily change and set the time with that 
easy to grab and wind. So crown is nice. It has a signed uh, H in there for the, the Hanhart logo. The pusher, you'll notice the position of the pusher. Normally you would have a pusher, say, symmetrical at two o'clock and the reset at four. What Hanhart has done here is they've moved the pusher up higher here so it's beyond the two o'clock. It's very easy, say if it's a, a stopwatch type of a function, it's very easy to use your thumb holding the watch as such. I can stop and then reset. Or even if I'm holding it like this, the finger just rests right up there. It's kind of been a trademark of Hanhart to have this pusher up, up high like that. I like it, it's different. It's uh, the red ceramic cap on there. Uh, it has a, a, a little dimple on there so I can easily tell whether my finger is on the, the chrono pusher or the crown. It's a big difference. I don't know how you'd mess that up, but anyway, it, it's nice that they have those little touches. So the crystal is a sapphire crystal. It has anti-reflective coating on the inside, and as you've probably noticed from the way you're seeing my lights here, it does have a convex shape to it. Just a nice, gentle curvature of that crystal. Just gives a nice look the way it uh, reflects the light on the crystal. The strap, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see a little bit more of that. This is a brown leather, a nice thick leather strap. It does have some rivets here. I think the rivets are more for decoration. I don't see the, the strap looping around and having this riveted in there. It's a, a brown strap with a beige stitching on there. Nice contrast. I think it fits. It's very appropriate with a pilot's watch. You have the two keepers, one that's uh, stitched in and one that's free. Back here, you have a brushed um, buckle. Let's see. I'm going to zoom in here. Let's, you can't see that. Get some light. There we go. Okay, so this is a, a brushed hand heart signed buckle back here. Nice strap. It will take some time to break in. It's fairly thick, so that has been a, a complaint with some folks that I've talked to. But I believe once this guy breaks in, it'll fit your wrist. Very nice. The movement that Hanhart is using on this Pioneer Mark I, this is a HAN3601, which is basically an ETA7753. And Hanhart, they mod the movement to get this pusher to be in this position, which I think is great. They go to uh, great lengths to make sure that this, the history of the, this type of watch going back to 19, what did I say, 1938, uh, this, this is nice that they keep that. It is an automatic movement. You can hand wind it. It is hacking. Uh, it runs at 28,800 uh, VPH, and you have a power reserve of 42 hours. Okay, let's talk about the dial. Let's start from the, the outside and work our way in. So we have the bezel, you know, the fluted bezel here. And then once we get inside of the dial here, the flange is a stainless steel flange that is brushed in a circular pattern all the way around. So then that steps down to the outside where we have markers for the minutes or perhaps seconds if you're using this for the, the chronograph function. In between each marker here, there is three markers that you could use with the stopwatch function. So I could clearly see that when I stop this, that would be, um, well, right there we're at 16, but it could be 16.25, 16.5, or 16.75. So we have those small markers in there to record the chronograph functions. Inside of the, the, the minute markers, we have large Arabic numbers for the hours, and those are loom-filled as well as the hands are loom-filled. The loom is good, but not great. It's better on the, the hands not so good on the Arabic numbers. The 
since we're kind of talking about the hands, these cathedral hands, I love. This is a design that uh, we see a lot on the, the German pilots type watches from this era. And the fact that they've kept that is, is wonderful. The, the marker, the syringe tip here on the, the minute hand, it's very easy. It's very precise to, to see right where that goes to. So continuing on with the dial, we have two subdials here. We have the chronograph, 30 minute chronograph here at three, and then we have the running seconds for the time here at nine. Inside of these subdials, the subdials step down, and then there is a snailing pattern on each one. The chronograph functions, so we have a 30 minute chronograph recording subdial here, and then the seconds here are both in red. The seconds here, the chronograph seconds is red, and then it has a white tip. And the tip, I'll see if I can get a photograph of it, but it, it, it curves down a little bit. And I think that is to, to help with the parallax error that you get. Now, parallax is when you have the, let's say the, the two functions, you have the dial underneath and the hand, and depending on where you're looking at, the, they can line up differently. So by moving that, that second hand down, tilting it down, it gets it closer to the dial and perhaps less of a parallax error. Nice touch, I, I definitely like that. So let's get this Pioneer Mark I on the wrist. And here we go. So just for reference, my wrist size is about seven and a quarter inches in diameter, which is about 18 and a half centimeters. It wears fairly well. It is a tall watch. So remember, it's, it's about 15 centimeters tall. So you are definitely aware that you have a larger watch. Now, it's only 40 millimeters in diameter. The bezel is fairly small, so there's a big black dial. So it wears larger than the 40 millimeters would... Uh, would uh, suggest. I will say, I do like the Hanhart, the lugs, the way they come out. So the lugs, they're, they're fairly long. And what that does is, I don't know if you can, there we go. You can see how it sets over my wrist and then the strap pulls down and it really helps to keep the the watch from moving around on my wrist. Let me pull that keeper back. So nice strap, it holds it. I think once this leather strap breaks into your wrist and, and your wearing style, if you wear it fairly tight or however you have it on your wrist, it will sit on your wrist just fine. Again, it's, it's a fairly thick watch, so putting it under a dress cuff, that type of thing, may be a little bit difficult. But, um, you know, it's a pilot's watch. I mean, that it wasn't designed to be a dress watch. I like the lugs. I like the look of the way those lugs just kind of come out from the, that slab side. So wearing comfort, I think because of the long lugs, I think it wears uh, just fine. Being able to use the chronograph function because it, it sits high and there is definitely some space underneath here easy to stop. And of course, we hit this again, it resets. So using the chronograph while on the wrist is not a problem at all. So if I was playing watch designer, what are some things that I could or, or would want to change? Probably, there's there's not much, quite honestly. The height, if, if I could... Uh, take off this this extra height that would be great but you know this is a uh, based off of the 7750 family and and that is a tall movement and uh, it allows them to put the the pusher in this position the other thing that i would like to see changed it you know is a little more loom on this uh, having more loom uh, on the especially the hands and and then the numbers would would be nice that's about it um, I love the this big crown. I, I just being able to, to to grab this if you wanted to do hand whiting to send hand winding to uh, set the time. It, it 
it's nice and it gives a, a very purposeful look to this uh, pilot's watch. I like the long lugs. I like the the way that uh, it's brushed on there. It's very crisp, the, the edges. It's not beveled. It has a, a nice edge and you can see the way that it picks up the light on there. That's nice. I, I that's a nice touch. Also for wearing comfort, the fact that it goes way out. And like I said too, this having long lugs allows you to put realistically any type of vintage, heavy, chunky strap, maybe even put this on a bun strap. That that could be a, a cool look. I like the, the two sub dials and I like the way that they are fit in between the the numbers here in other words they're not eating into the the two and the four and the eight and the ten the size of the sub dials are very nice the way they nestle right in between those those numbers nice design clean design of the the dial you only have a little bit of text with the hand heart and the year and then automatic on the bottom it's purposeful. It's a pilot's watch. It needs to be legible. We need to keep an accurate time. I think Hanhart did a great job on recreating a, a watch, a vintage watch, right, back from the 30s without going overboard with making this look all antique right? I mean, they didn't go crazy with making this all cream colored it's no it's it's like the way it would have come off the factory years ago so bravo to hamhart on that regard so my takeaway on this handheart pioneer mark one so this would be a great addition to anybody that has uh say a pilot's watch collection the chronograph function is neat and it's it's unique and the reason they did the, the one pusher like this is there is no way to mess up your timing. So when I hit stop here, that is my elapsed time. I There is no ability to hit this and have it continue on. That could be good or that could be bad. So it, you have to take that into consideration. When you stop this, there is no way to continue that. So as a pilot who's using this to figure perhaps a lap's time for speed and to figure out the distance and their heading, that is nice. There is no room for error. Um, and it's, it's unique in the pusher position up here. There's, I don't know of any other watches that have it up there. If you do, put them in the comments below. But I love the way that that pusher is up real high like that. So I feel that the Hanhart Pioneer Mark I is a unique pilot's watch. It's pretty cool that this watch is based off of a watch from 1938. I think the, the current folks that are running Hanhart did a good job on recreating that model. Unfortunately, a lot of vintage watches uh, from Germany didn't survive the years too well. Stainless steel was in short supply in Germany, so they used other materials that did not stand the test of time. So trying to find a vintage German pilot's watch from the 30s can be pretty difficult. So here with the Hanhart Pioneer Mark I, you definitely get something that has some historical credibility, if you will. And for the price, this guy comes in at U.S. dollars, $2,270. You get a very unique German pilot's watch. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, leave comments below, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.